Hey, let's get Spark History Server running. We're going to show a little bit of before and after. Here's the before. I've got Spark Master running locally with just one worker. You can see that here in the Spark UI. That doesn't tell us much. So I've got this um, Spark application teed up for us to run. I'm going to run that now. While it is running, I'll just show you the code quickly. It's about as simple as it gets. Here it is, the skeleton right here. And as I mentioned in the blog post, you can feel free to clone this from GitHub if you want, but it really doesn't matter. You can run any application if you'd like to see the before and after of history server. Let's see, yes, this is done now. And let's go back to the Spark UI. I'm going to refresh this page and I have completed application here. So what I'll do is I'll click in the completed application and notice there's not much to see. So um, I have no indication about any of the performance metrics of this application. Let's fix that. Um, let's do this. Let's start off with configuring the history server and I'm gonna show you the bare bones amount that we have to do. You ready? I'm gonna go over to a different tab here. I am in you can see here I'm in Spark 2, and I'm in the conf directory. If I do an ls on it, um, the file to call out is this one. This is the Spark Defaults conf template that we can modify. Excuse me, I already did that, and I created this new file called sparkdefaults.conf, which will be read um, when Spark submit is called. So let's take a look at what I did in this file. I updated three. What we need to do is update three config variables. We need to do spark event log enabled. I'll just do that now. The spark event log dir, which is also set to the spark history file system log directory. Notice these are both the same. And this directory, I'll save this. This directory is just here. It's nothing special. This is just a quick get started. As I mentioned, if this was in a, a more production-like environment, QA, UAT, or even production, if you want Spark History Server there, you would set that directory up to be more of a distributed file system like S3, HDFS, DSEFS, and the like. So we have set up now the total of three variables and we're ready to start up Spark History Server. It couldn't get easier. Where am I? Conf. So I go into SBIN and I do Start History Server. Should take just a few seconds and now we'll go to our browser. We go to port 18080 as opposed to 8080. We hit refresh and we've got the history server running, but no completed applications found. The reason why we don't have a found one from the one we already ran is because in that comp file I showed you, when I originally ran it the first time, I did not have the Spark event log enabled. So as you'll see here right in the comments, this is the default system properties included one running Spark submit. Now we have this enabled. So let's run that. Let's run that app again. I'll go to a different window, the same one we ran before. The not so special skeleton class, but here we go. We'll run it. Go back to Spark Master. We'll see that it's completed. Now let's go back to the history server. It refreshes every 10 seconds, so it may not be there right away as we just saw here. If you saw me refresh and it was still not there. Now let's click on this app ID. Holy moly. We've essentially got a Spark UI for a completed application. And that's what we were trying to do. Now we can take a look at um, some of the transformations and actions that we have run in our Spark application. Like I said, this is a really simple example to get started, but hopefully this helps. If you have any questions or comments, leave them for me and I will try to answer them as soon as possible.
Thanks. We'll see you later.